And so this morning, I want it for the next few minutes, I want to, I want to present to you, and, and this all goes in the same spirit, but we're kicking off this series today called The Upgrade. And uh, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. I don't know if you know this, but the, but the first church was a spirit-filled church. We call this Pentecost Sunday. Why? Because it's when Pentecost, pente means 50, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, death, burial, resurrection, is when the Holy Spirit began to move on the earth and to fill saints, not just here and there like the prophets of old, but rather every believer can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Every believer can, can pray and do the acts that Jesus did. He said, greater work shall you do also. In other words, the th things that we read about in the Bible, he says, you will do it multiplied times over and over. I don't care if you are a business woman or man or a housewife or a janitor or an engineer. I don't care what state of life you are or what background you are. God wants to fill every one. Amen. And he wants to use every one. Every one of us have a place in the body of Christ. And so the word says in Acts, 4, Acts 1, 4, Jesus instructed them, don't leave Jerusalem. This was when he was about to ascend into heaven. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait until you have received the gift I told you about, the gift the Father has promised. And if I can have my guys bring out my table for me, if you will. And he goes on to say, for John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so this took place about 2,000 years ago. And right after that, um, and if you go to the end of Acts chapter 2, Peter, who was doubting Jesus around the, the night he was being judged by the Sanhedrin. Yeah, that, there's good. Thank you. By the Sanhedrin, uh, Peter was, you know, Jesus prophesied to him, son, he says, son, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter, of course, says, no, Lord, I'll die for you. I would never do that. And the next thing you know, as Jesus was being put on trial and he could see the trial happening, I believe that Jesus looked, that, that Peter, by a little maiden girl, the Bible says, a little teenager walked up to him and said, aren't you one of those disciples? Aren't you one of the ones that followed Jesus? And Peter he didn't try saying, no, I'm a, I'm a, I believe in Jesus. Immediately he says, no, I'm not one of them. And he was asked three times over, and on the last time he even cursed God. And I believe at that moment Jesus caught his eye. The Bible says that the cock or rooster crowed at that moment that he denied, him, denied Jesus. And, of course, Peter ran and hid in shame and condemnation. But I love the, the, the story where when he rose again and the women who, found, who came to the tomb first on that resurrection Sunday, that the angel told, no, not the angel, but Jesus himself told them, go tell the disciples and Peter, I want to see them. He pulled out Peter's name. He said, I want him to know I love him. And the word says he would visit with him. And that same Peter, 50 days later, would get up and preach a dynamic word saying this Jesus whom you crucified is the son of God and he's risen again and he's at the right hand of the father for the forgiveness of sin. And the word says that 3,000 plus people shouted back to him, what must we do to be saved? And the word says that Peter told them in Acts 2, 38, Peter said to them, repent. Let er in other words, you've been following your own path You've been following your own way. Make, repent literally means this, make a U-turn. Have you ever had to make a U-turn somewhere, whether legal or illegal? My wife thinks U-turns are illegal, I think, because every time I do it, she's like, you can't do that. I'm like, yes, I can. Watch me. <laughs> hey, we're doing this. I'm not driving a half a mile down the road just to make a U-turn. We're going to do it right now. And so I guess that's why I got some tickets, you know. But um, 
but it literally means make a U-turn about face and go after God. He says, repent. Then he says, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus. Another places, Jesus told them, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. He says, baptize them. What it is is that public profession. We just had a baptism here last Sunday, people making a public profession. So it's not just an individual decision, but rather it's we, we, we go public with it and we identify with Jesus. And then he says this. He says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's a full package. Christ died. He rose again. He paid the price for sin. And now he sends, and we're going to get into it over the next several weeks, the role and function of Holy Spirit. But now he has sent the Holy Spirit to birth and fill the living church, the church of God, this church that we are a part of. And so it's a promise. He says, that's the promise I'm giving you. And so uh, just a few weeks ago, um, wow, time is moving, isn't it? Anyhow, just a few weeks ago, uh, I went to Texas with our SUM college students and uh, to do an outreach. By the way, next Sunday is Graduate Sunday. So we're going to come and celebrate about nine or ten graduates, high school and college. But we went to Texas, Dallas, Texas, and uh, a beloved pastor, Pastor Hector, that also is beloved by our church, uh, he went as well. And uh, he was renting a car, and when he got there, right out of the airport, he went right over to the car rentals, and he had reserved a car, and they issued him this vehicle. And when they were done with the paperwork, they realized they had given him the wrong vehicle. They gave him a vehicle that's typically twice the price. Instead of 500 a day, it was going to be like 1000 a day, and it was nice. And, uh, and all said and done, they said, you know what, we're just going to let you have it. You can use this. And, of course, it was a blessing to all of us because, um, you know, it was enough room and then some. We stuffed a couple in the trunk as well. And so I mean literal about that. So it was not a trunk. It was like a hatch, you know. It was a Suburban. It was that kind of a car, big one, monster car, monster vehicle. And um, <laughs> just don't tell anybody. So, you know, it reminded me of this. Have you ever got an upgrade for no extra cost? Have you ever, someone offered you something and really it was, and they, in, the, in the end you realized it was actually gonna be twice the price, but they said, you know what, it's yours. That's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. He paid one price and we get it all. And as we talk about the upgrade, his sacrifice includes your upgrade. His sacrifice includes the infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Let's give him praise for that. At no extra cost. And so why shouldn't we accept this upgrade? Why say this is as good as it gets? Why say, you know what, that's all right. I don't need, I don't need the upgrade. I'll just take this Pinto. Does anybody remember Pintos or Gremlins? Anybody drive a gremlin? Oh, yeah, we got one. You know, little compact car. No, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave us the best. He gave us the, the, the best blessing, the best upgrade. He gave us an open heaven to receive Jesus and to receive his, the Holy Spirit. And so over this next several weeks, we're going to talk about who is Holy Spirit, what is he about, and why God sent us the Holy Spirit. In the, church we, in the church world we live in, you know, several months ago I began approaching, I don't know if you know this, but over 80% of you are new to this church in the last year and a half. Honestly, th praise God for that. There, there are still those who were here pre-COVID, but the majority of people sitting in this audience today, I didn't know you a year and a half ago. And so, and so the, we, we, we're just seeing God doing some marvelous things. I would say bringing us to the place where we should be as a church, spiritually, hunger-wise, um, going after God. And, and you've probably heard a lot about Pentecostal churches if you've been around church life. 
and, and images come to you of guys handling snakes or, you know, crazy stuff like that. But I'm here to, but I'm here to demystify what Pentecost is. It's, like I said, it's the spicy salsa. Uh, it's going to make you sweat a little bit. You might be challenged over the next weeks. Okay, I don't know if I like it that hot. But I'm here to tell you, he wants to put a flame on your head. Amen? He wants to set you on fire. He wants to do a work in you that you didn't even think was possible. He wants to, he wants to, as the, what does fire do? Fire purges from the inside out and makes you, you know, we, we, we don't like fires that take place, but after it comes new growth. God wants to get out, get, he wants to pull the dross and the junk out of your life in this filling of the Holy Spirit and where it can give way to new growth, way to the newness of life, to the joy, the peace, all of the things that he promises. But we keep, we keep holding on to our stuff. But God says here, I want to do something in you. And so we want to, as we go through this series, we want to normalize it in the sense that I mean, it's, let me say it this way, it's not normal, but we want to demystify, we want to take the, the misconceptions out, and we're doing our best to use language that, that for many of you, as I said several months ago, I started talking to people, and I said, hey, have you heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And most of them said, well, I've, heard, I've been water baptized, and I said, no, no, this is something different. And, and what encouraged me as a pastor in 2021-22 is that it wasn't like they looked at me with a stink eye and says, okay, you were officially crazy and it's been good knowing you, you know? But instead, the response every time was, pastor, I don't know about that, but tell me more. That, that tells me there's a hunger. There's a desire. It's not like just discounting and saying, you know what, I don't want none of that. You're, you are crazy. You know, this church is crazy. It's a little bit too fanatical for me. But know this, that as we go through here, because again, this is your upgrade. This is what God, Jesus, paid for you. And to not pursue him in it is to not know Jesus. It's to not really know him as he wants you to know him. And so the Holy Spirit is not just a power. He's not just a presence. He's not just that tingly feeling you feel during a worship service. How many of you know, some, some people come into church uh, and they just want that feel-good feeling. And they're feeling, okay, I'm, I feel good. I'm good for the week. But I'm here to tell you, Holy Spirit is here for you 24-7. It's not just that feel-good feeling of his presence. And when you feel that, let me say this, though. When you feel that, you are feeling the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That is, it is not hype. We are not about hype here at Zeal Church. It is not about manipulation but rather you are feeling the tangible presence of God. Amen? And that's what I think has attracted so many because we're taking a stand and to believe God's word and to take him at his word. Amen? And so he's not, he, he, but he is a person. John 14, he says, I, John 14, 16, this is Jesus talking. I will pray the Father that he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. And he says, but you know, it, but it goes on to say this, he's the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells in you and, you, and, and will be in you. This is a promise that he's giving the disciples in his teachings and he goes on to say in verse, the latter part of verse 18, and he will, says, I, he says, and I love him and manifest myself in him. Let me back up. Verse 21, he who has my, he who keeps my commandments is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by the father and I will love him and manifest myself in him via the Holy Spirit. And so the Bible never re refers to Holy Spirit as an it, but rather as a person. And you will never develop a personal relationship with someone like the Holy Spirit if you don't see him as a person. If you read the word, the Holy Spirit has been present all along. He was there when God spoke the word. The Bible says the Holy Spirit hovered upon the face of the deep in Genesis chapter one, or chapter two, and he spoke the word, let there be light. 
That was the power of the Holy Spirit. We have what we call the Godhead. Oftentimes we just refer to God generically, just saying, I, I believe in God. But really it's three in one. And know this, that God the Father has no more power than God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus has no more power than the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has no more power than the Father and the Son. They are three in one. I want to demonstrate that. Maybe this will help you a little bit in understanding or uh, thinking about who is God. You know, we have water. Water takes many forms. In fact, the Holy Spirit oftentimes is known as water, streams in the desert. And so we see here that you have God, the Holy Spirit. Water also takes a form of ice. You know, it can be frozen. I love ice. I love cold things. I love a refreshing drink, right? That's another form of water, but it's still water. And then you have another thing called dry ice, which I'd like to refer to as God the Father. His glory fills the temple. Amen? His cloud, his glory fills the temple. He is also God. And so you have three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If, if sin were not present, Jesus would not be necessary to have come to the world. You'll see here in just a moment, in fact, go ahead and bring up my slide, if you will. I want you to understand that we're going to go through this for the next few moments as we draw near to the end of our time. But I want to break it down where you see that all three are God. You have God, God, and God. And that they all three are equal. They all three play a role. In fact, all three of them play a role in our salvation, play a role in our daily life. And so the titles we have for God is God the Father, God Jesus or God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then we look at their functions. Each one of them have a function. And know this, that every one of them, they all three, they work in tandem. There's perfect unity, perfect, uh, you know, I, I heard it said this way just a few months ago. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, they have never had a new thought, a new idea. They know God, they know all things. They know everything all at the same time. They know the end from the beginning. And so we see here that their functions are this. God is the provider. Jesus is the Savior. And the Holy Spirit now is our helper. I like to say it this way. God is the one who planned it. Jesus is the one who provided it. And the Holy Spirit is the one who sealed it, seals this sealed it in our hearts and reminds us daily that we are the sons and daughters of God. And so they each play a function. They each play a certain role in our life. And then their status is this. The word says, I mean, in essence, we know this. God in himself, he is set apart. He is in heaven uh, on a throne. Uh, he is, um, that's where he resides. That's where he operates from. Uh, God, and then we have God the Son, Jesus. If you remember when Stephen was being stoned, the book of Acts chapter 9, I believe, he, he, as he was being stoned, he looked up and he saw Jesus at the right hand of the Father standing to receive him unto himself. Jesus even said, I'm, you know, I, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father with all power in heaven above and in the earth and below the earth. That means every demon has to submit the word says, every tongue will ultimately confess that Jesus is Lord. And then we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is actively involved in our lives. In fact, notice the difference here. God is in heaven. God the Father is in heaven. God Jesus is in heaven. And God the Holy Spirit is on earth. He is the one who is actively doing the Father's will on earth. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, he will not come with a different message. 
He will not come with a different gospel. He will not, in fact, the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired 40 writers over a period of 1,500 years to write this gospel. It was like he was speaking to them. They didn't even know what they were saying altogether. They were prophesying things that they would never themselves see in the future. But they knew, but as God the Holy Spirit spoke to them, they wrote the words on page that has become our our word of God. This is not a book just about God, but it's the breathed God of word of God. In fact, it's the only book, you could go buy a lot of books, and maybe you've been to some book signings, but there's a lot of books in the world, but this is the only book on planet Earth that when you open it, the author shows up, that the author is present. He's right there. Why? Because God, the Holy Spirit, spoke the word of God, spoke the gospel. Paul even says, even if an angel of light comes to you and gives you a different gospel, don't believe it. He even says, if I come to you preaching a different gospel, don't believe it. And so we see here that God, God planned it, Jesus has provided it, the Holy Spirit is now at work in us, making this word come alive in us. They were not just seers, and, and, but we're doers, that we are doing. And so as God has provided, he set apart um, Jesus as our Savior who finished his assignment. The Holy Spirit is our helper who is active right now in the earth. The Holy Spirit isn't extra. Think about this. The Holy Spirit isn't extra. He's essential. That's what was intended when Peter preached on Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He says, and, that's an important word there, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive the gift. It's a full package. It's not like he's laying it out to you and saying, hey, here's salvation. And now keep in mind, as we get into this too, and we're going to talk about the the baptism and the gifts of the Spirit, it is not required to go to heaven to be filled per se. But in the same token, it will certainly help guarantee you go to heaven. Because he, because the, 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 the fight we're fighting is not flesh and blood. But we're wrestling with spiritual principalities, powers of the earth, temptations, and he will give you the confidence. It's not self-confidence, because Lord knows self-confidence will take us down the wrong road, like the Proverbs say. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the way thereof is death. Whereas when we have the Holy Spirit fully functioning in our lives, he will bring life. Amen? So it's not like an option. Like, it's not like the, the bronze package versus the gold package. He's only offering one package. He's only offering one way. He's like, hey, here it is. Jesus paid the price for it. It's your upgrade. It's, it's essential. Amen? And so he's our help. And so even when it comes to the word of God, you know, we can read the word of God for general uh, will of God, but it's that Holy Spirit that is there to help us in the moment. And so it's important that we as individuals, I want you to, in fact, as the musicians come this morning, I want you to, you know, this may be a new venture for you. It might be a new message for you as well, but it is the gospel. It is the word. This is God's desire for every one of us. I'm going to tell you this. The world is depending on a spirit-filled church. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the lost. It's about, it's about, it's about as, as, the, as the Lord's Prayer says this in, in Matthew, I think 11, it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. God says, I want to bring heaven to earth. I want, I want you to walk according to the standard of heaven. I want you to be filled with heaven's presence, heaven's power. Amen? I want you to know me in a way that you never thought was possible. And so as you stand with me this morning, 
We'll have the prayer team come forward in a moment to pray for any needs, but but I want you, I want to challenge you here today. We're planning for seven weeks over the next seven weeks to, to basically go after this, this essential gift. And you may be tempted to say, you know what? I'm just, I don't feel it. I'm not, I don't know, you know. Uh, whether you're a regular tender or you're a first time even. But I want to challenge you to say, God, being God, and it's in your word, help me. That's why Paul says in Ephesians, give us eyes that see and ears that hear and a heart that not only acknowledges it but receives your word. You might feel like dropping out over, I've, I've had people, I remember I did a series years ago and someone says, well, pastor, I'll see you in eight weeks after it's over. Don't do that. Don't do that. It was eight weeks where they missed great revelation from the word of God. It was eight weeks where they missed opportunities to be healed and delivered and set free. We ain't got time for that. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Like I said, the world is relying on a church that is full of the Spirit of God and full of the Word of God and is taking God to His Word. And so this morning, as you pray, as I'm going to ask you, if you will, just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. And, and this is just the initial time. We're just going to, we're going to just take a moment here and begin to say, Lord, I recognize you. God the Father, I recognize you. Jesus, I receive you. Holy Spirit, I receive you. And not only that, but Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me in this message? I want to accept the upgrade. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. These are the things I, I want to challenge you to pray. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. Now, Holy Spirit is not one that is worshiped he defers to Jesus. He's here to magnify Jesus. But we need, Jesus said you need him because he's going to help you in your unbelief. He's going to help you in your faith. He's going to help you to open up the word. And as the author, he's going to be right there saying, hey, Terry, this is what was, this is the word of God. This is what was intended. This is God's promise for you. This is what Jesus did for you. It's like wearing earmuffs and then taking them off. It's like sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher just want, want, want. It's going from that to full high definition where you're able to hear God's voice clearly. He wants to do that for you today and from this day forward. And so, Lord, here we pray today. Father, we thank you for sending your son. Jesus, we thank you for sending Holy Spirit. And we ask now, Holy Spirit, come fill us. Jesus, you're the one who has sent and commissioned and is the giver. But Holy Spirit, in this moment, we're saying yes. We're saying yes to this entire uh, endeavor, this entire uh, step that we're taking, not just me, the individual here today, but Lord, even as a body, we're pressing in. We're saying, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill. Fill to overflowing. Take me into the presence of God. Holy Spirit, the word says that no one can come to the Father unless the Spirit of God draws them. Holy Spirit, we need you. We can't get there ourselves. We can't convince ourselves. We cannot motivate ourselves to that place in the presence of God, in that place of intimacy. But we need you, Holy Spirit. We need you to draw us closer. We need you to fill us in the name of Jesus. And so right now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that we be filled in Jesus' name, that we would begin to experience a hunger like we've never had before, that we have tasted and seen something and we want more. We want more, and we want it desperately. We're going to get to the place, Lord, over the next weeks that we will say to ourselves, Lord, I want 
all that you have more than my next breath, more than my plan for the afternoon, more than anything else in this life, Lord. I'm going to get, if, it, if necessary, I'm going to get in these next seven or eight weeks, I'm going to get desperate with you. I'm going to rise up in a faith that cannot be denied. I want more of you, Lord. I want more of you, Lord. And so, Lord, I just, dear God, as your word commissions us, Lord, dear God, you're not, we're not waiting on you, but you're waiting on us. You're waiting on us to say, yes, Holy Spirit, come. Yes, presence of God, come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you just lift up your voices if you're willing to and just begin to just to pray, praise him? Just begin to magnify him, to thank him, to thank him for sending Holy Spirit, to thank him for paying the ultimate price, to thank him that he is offering us something that is otherworldly, that is heavenly, that is good, that is, that is pure, that is holy, that is right, that is righteous. That's why he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's nothing but pure, just as God the Father and God the Son. So, Lord, we're going to get desperate. If it means taking opportunity, taking more time, just go getting into your word and into your presence, if it means taking time even to fast and pray, Lord, we're, we're putting ourselves on notice today. We're saying, Lord, I am not going to miss this opportunity. Lord, I'm, I'm going to take full advantage of your promises, full advantage of what you have said, because I need, I need more of you, Lord. I need more, and I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I cannot live this word in my own strength. I cannot believe your promises in my own emotions or abilities, but I need the power of the Holy Spirit to rise up in me and remind me and show me and bring me to that secret place, that knowledge of you, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the, as the prayer team comes up, I want us to lean into worship with the, with the worship team at the moment and, and pray those words, God, Show me, reveal to me, open my eyes that I would see. Give me a heart to ears that hear, not just the physical words coming out of our mouth, but Lord, to hear what the Spirit is saying. And give me a heart that says yes, a heart that's hungry, a heart that's desperate in Jesus' name. If you want prayer this morning, please feel free to come. Or if you want to find a place of prayer, these altars are wide open to kneel and pray or to stand and pray. In Jesus' name.